get started. Here are the following topics for today. And I have to yep. remove this placeholder. So the first thing I was thinking is let's go through the general Imba2 um, status and then yep. uh, get to the user dot in bio and then some specific topics which i wanted to yep. just uh, go through and we yep. could also add some more topics is anything missing here uh i think most of the if something is missing i think it uh, fits right in as a sub sub point under some of the follow-ups like in to complete status and, and things like that so hmm. so uh, yeah. what is the status of uh, in batu so the status is uh, it's still pretty unstable and not in the sense of uh, of just uh, bugs or yeah it's it's unstable in that regard as well but but it's still unstable uh, in the sense of feature set and syntax because it's like I for for several days now I've been I've been uh, trying started to uh, use it for for some bigger projects mm -hmm. like internal projects here. Um, trying to get the feel for for the features, and I've been bouncing back and forth with regards to implicit self uh, for a very long time, and everything yeah. that entails. And um, the tooling has also been very pro problematic. So, uh, to taking your advice of extreme dog fooding, I've essentially spent a lot of time in the last week week or two um, making the VS Code tools good enough uh, with the uh, syntax highlighting and uh, go to definition and uh, go to jump to symbol in workspace, all of that, make mm -hmm. it good enough for me to actually enjoy developing things in Imba 2. And a part of that, after doing this for, for a long time, I have come to the conclusion, conclusion that we should uh, add implicit itself again. And I'm quite confident about that now because I've I've been thinking so much about it and actually experiencing it uh, for quite some time. So finally, I, I merged it back in 10 minutes ago or so, and I haven't released, done a new release yet. Um, but yeah. once that is released, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to publish, yeah, we can talk about that in the third point here, VS Code extension status, but essentially push a new alpha, which has these changes again, like, is reintroducing implicit itself that will be a pain in the ass for some people maybe who have uh, already started using Imba2. Um, but then also push the official VS Code tooling uh, today or tomorrow uh, with this new version of, uh, with this new alpha version. So other than that, then there are a bunch of uh, tag related missing features and stuff and we just need to uh, work our way through them. Um, but at least for me now, it's finally, I, I am kind of enjoying developing things in Imba2. Uh, and that's a, a big milestone. So, nice. um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the status. Yeah, I'm just going to note this down. So, yeah, uh, yeah and then I think I'm going to move this further up. So. I've been enjoying using Imba2. I think it's cool because I tried using web components a long time ago. I don't remember when. And I was yeah. surprised at how complicated it was and like mm -hmm. how much uh, like work you had to do and it didn't feel like you were getting any benefits. It felt very cryptic yeah. with uh, extending the HTML elementing and so on. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, in Imba 2, you could do it really straightforward. You didn't have to learn anything new. You just use the tag syntax and then bam, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've been using Imba 2 for small projects and it's been working. And with the comment mm -hmm. blocks, it seems to work. But uh, I, I definitely think we need to use Imba 2 on a bigger project, like a big project, mm -hmm. which is not. It doesn't have one single page, just one page, one view, but it has more views because everything yeah. I've tried to make has one view, basically. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to the page and then that's it, the app. So that, that is essentially the, the project I've started working on. It's kind of the bare bones part of parts of Git speak, including the data layer and the basic components like filtered lists and um, 
pop-ups and menus and, and widgets like that. And I think we should open source it. We could probably open source it pretty soon uh, and then just iterate on that until it works as uh, a basic starting point for, for uh, that kind of application like CRM, small admin system with the modules and yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't think that's the same thing. Uh, what you're talking about is um, is uh, replacing specific parts of G Git speak uh, with uh, new projects. What I'm talking I'm, about is I'm like. More uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just to, uh, I'm talking about essentially creating um, uh, UXA or UXA or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that, that's like, not what like I'm it was talking intended. About. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. Like, uh, yeah, because th then it's not you're not necessarily making a real application at all or something. So, that's so, so that was the plan. Well, the plan was to actually create a real, uh, simplified version of Git Speak. Just m basically as an implementation reference, while we uh, to make sure the store lay the data layer and the widgets. Uh, are like real world. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you're doing. Yeah. That, that I totally yeah. get that part, but that's not what okay, I'm talking yeah. about. What I'm talking about when I'm saying use it on a real project. Yeah, it's like this is the project where you're trying to do something specific, and you're yeah. solving some kind of problem. I think that's mm -hmm. what we really need, like to just to to feel the pains of okay. Uh, has this actually been taught out well? Maybe, maybe we should parts? create a maybe we should create a really good uh, Corona dashboard. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's popular these days. Yeah, I'll write it down. <laughs> yeah, that could be an uh, app. I'm not saying I'm interested in it necessarily, but like no, no. if you if you have one place you go in uh, and you can. Uh, navigate between different uh, views yeah. yeah and there's probably enough uh, interesting data to render uh, if it's text yeah. images video and even graphs so yeah i think yeah. that's probably a nice uh, more interactive application uh, <coughs> eric has tried making something with uh, i don't know if you've seen it this um yeah i don't have it up now the cham something. Did you see it? The coloring uh, app? No. Uh, Let me see if I can find it. The score. Let's see. Uh, is it this one? Colors? Yeah, colors. I think that's it. There. So do you, just to show the example even more. This is uh -huh. the most complicated example Eric has made. And this is a cool app. Yeah. I like it. But notice one thing. It's one, like, it's just yeah, a, yeah. one pager, basically. And yeah. uh, I, think, I think we're going to hit some limitations as soon as you start. Like, even one limitation we have right now is the routing. Like, um, yeah. how are you supposed to do routing? But, I, but for me, that is, that is the reason... Um, I think the approach of creating a, a simplified version of Gitspeak is actually the right approach because in that context, you will essentially like, uh, it's the perfect way to do dog fooding. You essentially have to create these uh, working components like the router, like the, I started with the tooling initially now because I just couldn't really work on the, on the uh, Gitspeak uh, application without making the tooling better. So I started with that. Soon I will probably hit into the problem of routing when I start dealing with the views. Then I will make sure Imba router is pulled into Imba and working well for this kind of, of uh, example and, and just take these, um, tackle these uh, challenges uh, in the natural order as you, as you stumble upon them. Because my fear is that if we just now started creating a complex application uh, just from scratch, mm -hmm. then we would essentially mess around and create all these custom things and, and 
work around problems in Imba, et cetera, instead of doing like the first principle, going through creating the application, what are the problems here, making the language evolve and, and improve uh, as you go along. Maybe that was not very well explained, but I hope you catch what I'm trying to. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced. Like, uh, I'm definitely not convinced. So okay, yeah. it sounds like the, uh, what you're trying to do is what I want to do with real projects. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely get that the approach I'm talking about is much more expensive with regards to time usage. Yeah. But it seems like that's yeah, the... So, yeah, it's, it's, so, so I guess for, it depends on, on uh, for me, <laughs> just as a business decision, it is important for us to start moving Gitspeak over to Imba version 2. So mm -hmm. that was part of the plan there. Like this is the first steps in, in building Gitspeak in Imba 2 and then open sourcing the, the lighter parts of it uh, to the community. So if we could open source, if, if we just had decided that the whole of Gitspeak would be open source, then I think it would be the perfect, the, the absolutely perfect type of application because we have already spent so much time thinking about how the, the application should be structured and work and then uh, it's much easier to just, uh, yeah, migrate it and, and make it work in, in Imba 2. So for me, it's, it's more of a time issue. It's difficult for me now to start uh, working on a huge, f totally new open source product in addition to Imba and it's speaking all the other things. I mm. think I maybe lost you. No, you didn't lose no. me. I ah, can hear yeah. you. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I'm just, I, I get what you're saying. I'm not saying you should make uh, something. Okay. But yeah. uh, we need to, someone has to do it. Someone has to go through yeah. the process. And I think, um, I don't know if Eric is doing it, but I'm definitely going to go through the process uh, because like, we definitely need to hit more of those pain points and then just yeah. report them back because we're already seeing pain points with simple use cases, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm not saying they are impossible to fix or hard to fix. It's just that these are simple applications we're talking about. How is it going to be when we actually get to some harder ones where you're actually, you are trying to do something really cool and yeah. then you meet the limitations of the language? Yeah. But, but the, the, that approach works and I think the, I, I can try to uh, spend some time uh, on actually using it on specific apps. I think this is worth, like for example, one thing I'm interested in is, uh, do you know the, um, let me see if I can show it to you. Do you know Quizlet? Mm, I've heard about it, but I haven't. Yeah, it. so basically it's just a flashcard app. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I can find a good example. So you have simp uh, sep um, sorry, you have multiple modes in it, but it's the yep. same data set. So basically what it's doing, it's rendering from the same data sets, uh, but it's mm -hmm. behaving differently depending on the mode. So in the flashcard yep. mode, you have like, um, I think it's uh, the, the word and then the definition. And yep. then uh, the learn, I don't remember. Spelling is obvious, it's just the sound. And then a test is where you get many of them and then you have to write them out and it mm. matches where you have them on like uh, here is one and then you have to connect them by uh, drag and drop and then mm. gravity is some kind of game I don't remember. So I think that's definitely something I want to look into making because you have the... You that have sounds the, like cool. Yeah, I, th I think so too. It's uh, also fun. And it's, mm. um, it's not anything that's competing with Gitspeak or uh, Scrimba. So uh, yeah. it's yeah. a nice small uh, learning, uh, learning app. And I think it's yeah. big enough to expose some of the issues that Imba currently, Imba 2 currently has. Yeah. Because it's yeah. not like a one pager rendering some stuff. It's actually something where you have to navigate back and forth. So I'm curious, so what is the status on the router and uh, what, what are you thinking about? The router when is it going to be available uh it's probably that's the now i've been struggling with the implicit self and, and tooling and now that i can finally go back to continue work on the uh, sample application i think i will start to tackle the router pretty soon like um 
yeah, it's it's one of the one of the next upcoming things I I'm going to work on. Yeah, because I think it, yeah. it that's one blocker currently for uh, you can do it. You can figure out a way to use the route API available, but it's uh, yeah. it's a pain point. Yeah, true. Um, so, is there anything else we can add to these two bits, or? Um, I don't think so. Not not for now. We'll have more meetings. So. Mm. So uh, mm -hmm. the next topic was uh, users.imba.io, and I saw you were racing to answer some things. So I don't yeah. need to go through all of them, but um, is there anything here you uh, <coughs> wanted to highlight or missed? So just the first thing is is kind of the the first topic web component bug. Yeah. That's, um, I've seen a few few of these and and some confusions, um, and it's important that we uh, decide how to deal with it because right now you can kind of inherit from native tags in Imba2, but when you do, you lose some functionality like mount and unmount hooks and things like that. And that makes things very unpredictable. So we either need to make it really clear what happens when you inherit from a native tag, or we need to change how the whole native tag inheritance works. Um, I'm not totally sure. Uh, so would you say that would be the life cycle of a uh, tag then, or is it? Uh... Yeah, it's just in general, there are weird things like if you create an app dash uh, uh, avatar, tag and inherit from a div then it will suddenly be a div in the dom so you can file it using the uh, app dash avatar uh, selector in css uh, it doesn't have mount and unmount yeah so the life cycle uh, essentially and there are some uh there are some uh, some uh, yeah problems with it. So so the question is, should we maybe just disallow inheriting from native tags completely or should we, um, yeah, probably I just need to think a little more about it because I have, I've delayed all that stuff. I know it's a, it's a challenge and I haven't really started trying to tackle it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's a... Uh, so, uh a better explain inheritance then or you can reword yeah, it yeah be better explain uh, custom tag inheritance and limitations yeah but uh, like uh, i i don't know uh, that just off the top of my head what the consequences is going to be but like i would assume if you're inheriting from something like uh, if you're inheriting from yeah. a button like in Imba yeah. one, like what are you really getting if you are? The, are you just getting some default styling, or why would That's you need to inherit? In Imba one, in Imba one, it will essentially the the tag that is created in the DOM will essentially be a button tag, mm -hmm. like the closest native element you've inherited from. Um, and in Imba one, we didn't use custom types at all in the DOM, so any type of tag name or anything was always just added as a class name to the native tag in the DOM. Yeah. So it's not that ambiguous in version one, but in version two, it's, it's uh, a tag that does not inherit from a native tag versus one that does are much more different uh, from one another than in, in version one. Yeah, but I'm thinking like, let's say uh, today, uh, if, we, uh, if we removed uh, inheritance and yeah. everything is custom how would you get the same default look for buttons if you wanted this is my button and you just wanted the default button you mean if you want to create a button that that extends a native button yeah so you couldn't do that with the that approach then no with that approach you would essentially need to to um yeah, create a, a button wrapper and keep the button inside that. So I, I definitely agree that it's not ideal. In that sense, I think we should probably allow inheriting from native tags. But if we do, we must both make it clear that um, the tag will actually um, 
the name of the tag will should be added as a class name on the native tag or something like that. And then we need to make sure that the uh, uh, lifecycle methods work. And that's one of the things I'm I most uh, not worried about, but I, that I really need to um, find out how we should do in the best way. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I don't really know again what the consequences is of the wrapper. Like, does it really have any performance issues that if you you end up with so many wrappers, or is it um, fine? At least I I don't think it's ideal. Like I I like when you have <laughs> as few wrappers as possible and make things as as clean as possible. Um, yeah, it's gonna be very messy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So uh, any other topics here? Let's see. Um, not that I can think of right now. Uh, yeah, so one, uh, again, this is the third, the syntax for CSS. So that's good. Yep. We don't need to cover that at all. But I, but just mm -hmm. to mention one thing. Uh, so the first time Eric mentioned this syntax thing, right? I was thinking, oh, yep. the, but why do we need this stuff? But yep. I've seen some of his other... Um, uh, att attempts at explaining it basically and yeah. one thing that we don't have with the comment blocks is the variables like you can't really pass in variables from imba yeah. land to the comments so yeah. that's actually uh yeah, that's potentially interesting but but allowing but if we want to allow that then that's a much more complex type of css integration uh because unless they are compile time variables that you can inject Mm. then you essentially need to hook up a live connection to a CSS style sheet and change. So there are many, many, uh, uh, it's a whole different thing if we want to allow. Um, yeah, so I definitely think there's, uh, initially I wasn't convinced there's value in discussing this syntax again, but now yeah. I'm actually starting to yeah. believe, I'm not saying it for Imba2 now, that, that's definitely not uh, yeah. my opinion, but like, yeah, I'm starting to think, this is actually something, uh, yeah, it's interesting to discuss at yeah. some point. Yeah, and at I think the variables. Uh, mm. And I and, and definitely I see that a lot of the issues and discussions um, coming up to to uh, two point oh now has been about styling and CSS blocks and how that should work and the features we need for CSS blocks and and stuff like that. So we had this discussion before and I think you uh, you were the one who convinced me that like we shouldn't even think about that until later yes, yes, and I yes. still agree and I still agree about that but I do think that we should definitely look into it later and not mm. too late like uh, I think already I'm I'm churning uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the problems in the back of my head that various times so um, I do think we should look into it yeah, that sounds yeah. good. So mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything else. I just wanted to add that comment. Uh, yeah. But I think it's good that Eric is trying to uh, show different examples of it. And uh, mm. yeah, yeah. So I think Eric is probably the one who has been using Imba to the most by far of any of us, like more than me. Uh, I've been mostly developing it, not developing with it. So. Mm. No, I think it's cool. So I uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully he he will uh, listen to this episode and try to make some bigger, bigger project. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So the next thing is the VS Code extension status. Um, mm -hmm. So I was supposed to look at it, uh, but I didn't get um, yeah I didn't get the opportunity to do that. Yeah. But uh, That's actually, sorry. That's actually fine uh, because. Let me see. Uh, because just because I was so sick of the syntax highlighting being broken all the time, mm. I essentially tried a different approach now where I uh, started out again with uh, the TypeScript syntax highlighting, like the made by Microsoft for mm. VS Code, their TM language file, and just adding and modifying a few things to make it work with, with Imba. The, the downside with it is that it's insanely complicated because it tries to 
add almost semantic like coloring for variable definitions and, and things like that. So it has a ton of very verbose rules. Um, so I'm afraid it is probably quite slow and stuff, but it is working fine. So now syntax highlighting is actually looking pretty nice in, in uh, VS Code. Uh, so the next step is probably now that we also have semantic highlighting from the language server, from the email language server, I think we can drastically simplify the TM language um, file. Right now, the, the, the structure is pretty weird because the highlighter and uh, no, the, the, or the YAML based TM language file is now exists in the sublime Imba repository and there's a script there that builds it and it's just copied into the VS Code tools. So we need to re reorganize that, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, coming to, it's coming together nicely. And I'm also, I also, just because I didn't like the colors, et cetera, at all, mm -hmm. I also uh, created a, a, basically a Scrimba theme for VS Code that I know a few people have asked for as well with a very nice uh, coloring for for Imba and other things, obviously. Nice. So have you published so that to... team? Huh? Have you published the it, team? It, no, not yet. So that's probably I'm going to publish it. Initially, I'm just going to keep it inside the Imba VS Code plugin as a default so that you have the, the theme when you download that. But we should also extract it and release it as the Scrimba theme, I think. Uh, because nice. people have been asking for that. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some of the completions, uh, et cetera, are still quite broken, um, but it is radically better than it was, uh, two weeks ago. And yeah, it, it is especially go to uh, symbol in workspace is extremely nice. So now if you just do like command T in VS codes, you can easily jump to any method in any class, in any Imba file in the project really quickly, so. Cool, I'll have to check it out, uh, the yeah. latest version. I can post some screenshots of that as well. I could nice. also share the screen now, so just quickly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let me um, uh, stop. Yeah, let me see, maybe I can just share the, uh, I need to, uh, open system preferences and do that whole ritual. I need to, I need to rejoin. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll talk to you soon. Mac OS uh, security. How could they ship this stuff? Yeah, I can hear you now. Cool. Uh, share screen, let me see. Package. I guess this, I just need to find the correct window. Do you think Zoom is an Electron app? Yeah, probably. Don't you? I'm not sure, I was actually, it, it looks like one now, but I don't know. There, cool. So you can see the window now? Yeah, nice. Yeah, so this is just one random. So this is a theme. Um, and so everything here, you see the hovering, you can jump to definitions. Nice. This actually has two definitions. Uh, but you can, from anywhere, you can jump to definitions as, uh, as you would expect. You have autocomplete, very nice autocomplete. Uh, that is near instance. There are some things like global variables and that are, are not included in the autocompletions right now, but it's going to be. Uh, you also have autocompletion for tags and that includes custom tags. So if you have, let me see if it works now, but app something, uh, then you have autocompletion for, for uh, yeah, custom tags, etc. as well. And you also have obviously jump to 
symbol in file. But the the nice one of the nicer things that I'm using a lot is the jump to uh, workspace symbol. So just command T and then you have everything. So if I want to go to collection array, and then you just get to that file and that function. So, and you also obviously get um, um, get the uh, the uh, TypeScript type checking stuff. So if I here tried to add uh, with two variables, mm. uh, then you will essentially get nice error messages where you can jump to and see, oh, it expected zero to one arguments we got to. Um, so that's, that works for everything. So if you, if you try to, let me uh, add something, title, you see that, oh, so this property here doesn't exist here. But if I do, then that error is removed. What if you and now call this it? And now this fails because it it uh, it expects uh, a different return value. Yeah. So um, uh, that's another thing I didn't mention earlier. It, again, one of the reasons I've been kind of uh, going uh, off grid for for a while, uh, trying to nail the final syntax, is that it is probably very annoying for people that have started using Imba2 that the syntax changes all the time still and people need to add like small changes to their projects every time they download a new alpha. So one of the other things I have been thinking a lot about is whether to include the prop keyword or not. Uh, now that we, have, we are using implicit self, we are definitely, we definitely don't want to uh, declare fields with at, so mm -hmm. either it would be without anything or with the prop syntax or, mm -hmm. or with the prop. Um, right now I'm kind of leaning towards prop because it looks weird to me that you have all these uh, without any anything else. Um, but I'm going to think a little more about it while developing these applications. And now that we have in place itself, I do think that we could probably use the at symbol again just for uh, uh, decorators like you do in, in JavaScript. What do you think about that? I think uh, prop is good as a prefix there. Yeah. And the decorator syntax, yeah, it's going to be available now because we're not going to use it. Uh, yeah, that actually looks yeah. good. Yeah. So how I about... So uh, well, and it's, it's pretty... It's uh, like Objective-C and other languages where you expect app to be kind of a meta, mm. meta, yeah. So how about uh, writing, um, if you want to add a private, uh, a private field now, how would you do that? So, Is it still? So, so one, a private field right now would be prop title. Mm. But I have been thinking about this and uh, yeah, this uses an old version, so it, it throws an error. But I'm also wondering now, to be completely honest, do we need the custom private field syntax? Because when you have implicit, one of the good things about it was that when you didn't have implicit itself, it is less typing to just know that, yeah, this is kind of always implicit. Um, but now that we have implicit itself, couldn't you just choose that? Yeah, if you want to use that convention, then private fields are just underscored. Oh yeah, uh, I like the underscore. I like the underscore, it's nice. Yeah. Because then you would, then we could use the the whole uh, hash prefix for something else down the road, like slots or something else, like mm. automatically bound properties, or I, I don't know. But uh, do you think that might make sense to just let people? Yeah, I think it makes sense. But let's say, let's assume you made some kind of widget tool, right? You have seen yep. the you go to a site and then you get the chat at the bottom right corner. Right, yeah. and yeah. Uh, like I'm just trying to think, um, but maybe nothing is exposed. If you define this is my widget, what's actually yeah. being exposed? If someone tries to access that uh, component via the DOM, what can can they see? What can they see inside of the tag that you've defined? Yeah, so they if you use Shadow DOM or no matter what you use, they can see everything, obviously. Uh, but again, if you um, 
even if we use the way private variables, uh, private fields are implemented in Batu, you would still theoretically be able to access them like if you wanted to. They are just garbled variables with a special prefix. Uh, and the same goes for TypeScript. Like if you create private properties in TypeScript, you can access them directly from JavaScript just with, with an underscore. Mm. Um, so it's not an, an it's not a real feature like the way private fields are going to be in the, in the ES next something. Yeah, um, I was just thinking if you were using it as an API and then exposing something, but uh, it probably doesn't make sense. No, you can still do that. Let's say if you decided that either underscore something or uh, secret with the dollar sign at the end, whatever you want, like that's my secret thing, then you can still mm -hmm. expose them like, uh now i've exposed that uh my private hair okay as the, that's the same way you would do it now like secret mm. 100 then you can now from the outside do self no uh yeah object dot secret to get it yeah this is a getter and that returns so i'm just thinking that maybe it doesn't make sense now to really i think the reason i wanted to include private fields was essentially to keep implicit self for something mm. like yeah it, it's nice to have because it it looks weird this starting to look more weird i think so in this case here uh <laughs> yeah that looks better than this but when you instead have or actually have implicit self then i think they are pretty equal and the same goes for for you often use the dollar sign for internal stuff like loads or resets. Let's say that's a, an internal function, essentially that you don't want people to use from the outside, but it should be available from the outside. And that as well looks really weird using the, the mm. at symbol, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think this, I think this is good. Like uh, getting the proc, uh, keyword back it looks nice yeah after yeah. thinking about it for a while now and experimenting yeah. but the private um with um yeah I'm, i i don't know what i think about it because i haven't really been using it and i don't see how you would use it now if uh, yeah. unless you're defining an api and then you want to hide something away why would you use it like i don't see the point to be yeah. honest and and often especially for me i've been wanting to use it exactly to hide something away but then at the same time, I've been struggling with it because in the same library, especially in this store library, mm -hmm. I have wanted to, oh, I actually do want to access that private from outside somewhere else, but just in the same library. So I know the internal implementation of uh, a model when I'm dealing with it in a model set. But I don't want to expose it to anyone else, but I do want the function in the model set to be able to peek into and deal with the private internals of the model. So that breaks down when you use private variables. But if you just decide to use underscore to denote that something should be private, then a person with knowledge about it can still access and poke into the private, uh, the internal stuff from outside. Yeah. So yeah. one other thing I was thinking about, just since we have this example up, like uh, what happens yeah. when you have a conflict between the name of a property and the actual uh, DOM attribute on the element? Uh, so uh, it's something like title, right? Uh, I don't know. Is title like let's say something has title is uh, a DOM uh, uh, DOM attribute? Okay, so the title or yeah. So title. if you define the prop title, you would essentially just override the the native DOM title. Uh, so if you outside of here now spawned a uh, mm. something with title equals hello, yeah. um, then that wouldn't appear in the DOM. But it doesn't make sense to override a title like yeah, that. Yeah, but but would you be able to? Okay, so when you do that assignment now, title equals it would be available to the tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you would get the hello value. Okay. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, and so if you, as a conventional, you might want to like, when you add types of properties that are not really related to the DOM, like data-like properties, you might want to prefix them with a dollar sign or 
whatever. I'm not sure what the conventions people will like are, and it's difficult to discover these conventions until we create applications and actually find good ways to do things. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I I've been trying to uh, experiment with some things, and I I've, I've tried to like figure out stuff and. Uh, I was thinking yeah. like the using the, I would like to avoid using the native DOM APIs as much as possible because yeah. they are actually like, yeah, you actually have to do a lot of work to use them, like yeah. uh, get attribute and so on. It's nicer if you it, have a simple keyword. By the way, if you look at the syntax highlighter now also looks pretty nice with uh, type, uh, typed properties and stuff. So you can, Oh, I can't see the oh. backspace. Can you make the font bigger? Just a little bit bigger. Ah, yeah. Uh, I can just zoom in. No, oh, oh, that was not zoom in. Okay. The demo. Okay. Um, Let's see. Yeah, so maybe it's my monitor, but since you probably are using a retina screen right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the problem. I, I end up uh, with the low contrast and uh, where it's light, the subtle differences in... in uh, yeah, but this is good. Yeah, you don't really need to see think, the backspace. But yeah, and I, and, I, and I think the backspace should almost disappear. Mm. Almost. It's um, almost not there. I, I wouldn't have yeah. seen it unless you... Yeah. Um, nice. This looks And that good. works for variables and like this mount data uh, store. Yeah, I know that's probably not a type right here. Um, but you can... Uh, Again, the compiler won't really deal with this. Um, yeah, that was actually just an error because I tried to redefine it inside of the function. So nice, nice. Um, so um, yeah, the auto completion is it's weird sometimes. But again, you can the compiler just to make you make it clear the compiler won't really care about these typings right now the mm -hmm. compiler is just dumb but it will compile them to js doc comments and then the typescript uh, uh, part of the tooling will actually um, take these into account and then uh, show you uh, errors and and warnings for for misspellings and things so nice the, this yeah. looks good and uh, yeah. I really like it because of the, like, at least if you're going to write uh, a lot, lots of APIs, you can use yeah. that to uh, generate APIs documentation. APIs is brilliant, especially, like, I'm not sure if I have any good, I should have uh, opened the different window instead with the actual tooling, but maybe I can do that. Let me see. Uh, open. Ah, then I just jump to a different, I'm just going to close that. And just try to open. Uh, don't say. You can still see the screen. Yeah, I can see the screen. Uh, so let me just remove that and remove that. This is really large, but this is the language server and the tooling, and it mm. is really nice to, like, in the language server since we're dealing with. Um, uh, TypeScript, you have, so you see service is the TS language service. You get full auto completions and jump to definitions for everything from that library. Amazing. And that's, you need sometimes, so this just happens fully automatically, but sometimes you will need to uh, help the compiler, like uh, whatever, like sometimes you will need to, to help uh, TypeScript uh, know what kind of a variable something is let's see if i have uh yeah so it has example. the type inference it can infer the type there yeah yeah but yeah but in something like root files i actually had because it, it doesn't know that from before it knows it's an array but it doesn't know the type of content in the array array so to ah, make that okay. work well i had to define that the prop with the type um so that was just to get rid of some warnings because when I didn't, when you don't have that, then TypeScript, uh, the tooling will tell you that, hmm, sometimes it doesn't really know, does this include only strings or not? So you can see, uh, no, maybe it actually doesn't happen anymore. But, uh, but yeah. This is just but if you do it with Node, like, yeah, so it works with Node as well, with the fs.read. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It nice. should, like, we can, we can try. Yeah, yeah let's try FS. that. Require fs. 
So, no. Uh, Whoa. That's dot. Read. Yeah, yeah, it's working. Amazing. Yeah. This is like yeah. uh, one <laughs> of the most used functions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And, and, uh, and I haven't implemented everything yet, but since we are just piggybacking on, on uh, the tight soup tooling, then we will get um, signature hel helpers as well. So when you actually do uh, something like this, then you can get auto completions showing the arguments that you need and the types of arguments. And yeah. Yeah, great it's work. Just, there's so many awesome things to add here. Yeah, this is definitely uh, going to be a productivity boost uh, with yeah. regards to like writing small definitely. tools, scripts, and yeah. so on. So one thing, I just uh, to let you in on a dirty secret now, one uh, experimental feature I have added, uh, it's an experimental syntax mm -hmm. that I know we have discussed before and you just uh, uh, didn't like or just thought like, why would you ever want that? Let me uh, see. Yes, it's just that I... I really, there's a reason I did it like that in Inba1. I really don't like all these function calls with empty parentheses. Mm -hmm. I think both that it looks kind of ugly and that it's just, uh, it's also quite weird to type because especially when you have a change of something, you do a uh, service, something, then you add these and you will always be positioned um, in between them. So you need to do an arrow or an enter to get out of it and all that. So it makes sense for me. I'm going to try it out more personally, but I added, uh, I changed the way uh, the um, the bang, like the dangerous thing, to actually execute methods without arguments. So that this isn't execute. You cannot define a function with the bang. You can still define a function with the uh, like uh, predicate method methods, but the bang here now is simply just uh, to uh, execute functions without arguments. And I think from my experience so far is that it, for me at least, it looks much nicer. Like it's so often you do things like this. Uh, uh, there are quite a few methods that naturally has no arguments. And it's also even understandable from the name of the method as well. I think the bang or the exclamation mark is the really understandable symbol for like I'm actually now going to execute this, do this instead of just accessing it. Yeah, it makes sense when you read it like that. But uh, so what happens if you pass it to a method which has arguments? Is it going to pass? So, all? so right now, since I've just added it kind of as a secret uh, thing to test mm. out, I think it doesn't work with arguments or maybe it does. No, but if you, if you don't have any arguments, it's going to call the function without arguments then? Yes. So this is actually calling the function. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. the whole point. That it is kind of a. This is the same as as uh, doing this. Yeah, yeah, I get that part. But yeah, if you yeah. passed in add file instead of emit file, it would call add file without any argument, basically. Or will, uh, would that generate an error right now? Yeah, you mean if I do like this? Yes. Yeah, it would now. It would generate a warning just because it the add file expects an argument. I think. Uh, but now there are so many problems here that I think it's kind of yeah. Yeah, but it you seems know, uh, it seems cool. Uh, like um, yeah. yeah, for the setup example you showed, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, we will probably need to test it out, but I just wanted to let you in on the. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's I cool. I, I like it. Yeah. It makes sense when you see it used this way. Uh, yeah. But the the issue I have with it is, um, and maybe we sh maybe that is good. Like uh, yeah. it's already being used in some other cases. Like for example, in Swift, when you uh, yeah. have um, optional chaining and then you're forced on wrapping. So yeah. like uh, in Swift, at least you have negative uh, association with the exclamation mark. So uh, th that's okay, why I, yeah. when I see it, I'm, I, I think about force unwrapping. It's like you're unpackaging something, which is you don't know what is inside okay. of the box. So yeah, yeah, I don't have, I haven't used Swift a lot, like almost. I just played with it uh, superficially, so I don't have these connotations. Um, but yeah, I'm. Um, I think it's gonna stay in there, but uh, we'll we'll see for for a while.
Yeah, I think it's good to it. try it out yeah. and then see uh, if it works yeah, exactly. or it doesn't work. So uh, yeah. amazing, great work. And yeah. hopefully yeah. in April we can do a extensive demo, like uh, yeah. maybe one hour or maybe even two hours of just uh, the VS Code extension on YouTube yeah. or something. It's just so nice. Just see these. You have all the auto completions, just like you would in TypeScript. Then, mm. it's, yeah, it looks good. I'm really, definitely going to start uh, using it today. Yeah. So, so I'm going to, uh, I, I was wondering. I, I was going to change this and release it as a new extension for Imba, mm. but then I saw that uh, the Imba organization on the Azure is taken. So. Is it problematic? Couldn't we just release this as a new like version two of the existing plugin? It still works quite. The syntax highlighting just work, still works well with. No, I, I think that's a very bad idea. Uh, Why? Yeah, because uh, we know people are working on the Scrimba code base, and yeah. it's like ah. you haven't been working on the Scrimba code base yeah, yeah. for like every day on yeah. a while, and it would yeah. suck to like totally break uh, the workflow of some people. <laughs> It, it, yeah, I, I'm just I thinking think. out loud. It would, if if there is, uh, I don't know how their setup is, but let's assume they update, and then uh, yeah. it just totally breaks on them. That would very yeah. suck. Yeah. So maybe, but we can at least release it on the same organization. Isn't that okay? Just release it as, as instead of calling it the. But is there a pre? Cool. If there is a way to specify the at pre like we do on npm, that would be better. Yeah, I don't think that's possible. Sadly. Um, yeah, then maybe it's okay to just release it there on Scrimba mm. with yeah. a different name. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, but I, yeah, with a new name, right? Yeah, so yeah, new name, different. Uh, but one Imba Pre, just call it Imba Pre. Yeah. <laughs> but one alternative, to be honest, would also be uh, it would probably take uh, a day extra or something, but to just make sure it works good with uh, good enough with Imba uh, 1 as well, because there yeah. are things here that with Imba 1 will still work much better than the existing VS Code plugin. So the whole jump to uh, symbol in workspace will work for Imba 1 projects as well, because it doesn't use the compiler that way to extract the symbol. Yeah, so uh, I, I think in my opinion, it would be better if the overall, um experience writing Imba code would be better, including Imba 1 and 2. Yeah. So yeah, yeah there is value in making Imba 1 work better, but I, like uh, you have to decide that on your own if it's worth yeah. spending time on. I don't know, like, because like how much are you going to test this actually? Are you going to write some Scrimba code and then uh, see if it's working or are you just going to yeah, yeah. quickly so glance started, at I it? Yeah, so I started earlier today by just browsing through the whole Git speak code base using VS Code and this plugin um, just to see what worked and what didn't work. And, and to me, most things looked fine, but like uh, semantic variable highlighting and stuff doesn't work for Imba 1 right now. So, But the coloring looks decent. Yeah, I think the coloring it looks better. Than so what the, what's going to happen now with the auto completion? Are they going to end up with seeing thousands of errors, or as soon as someone starts writing anything in Imba one file? You think about in, in the in Imba one? Yeah, with this new extension in Imba yeah, one. Yeah, I think that's the, the the thing there is that we just need to make sure that it doesn't throw errors that you can see and that it just returns no auto completions probably for most things. Mm. Uh, I think that was the case from before as well, wasn't it? that it essentially just has no auto completion. I, I experienced some weird stuff with it, to be honest. Like yeah. <laughs> I experienced the backspace not working and uh, yeah. stuff like that. So I totally disabled it uh, fairly. And quickly. I think, yeah. And I think that is the thing that I have never actively used uh, VS Code to do Imba 1 stuff. Mm. So I do think the, the original extension was pretty broken. So I think this, with a little more work, work will probably still be a much uh, a upgrade for people who still use it within by one. Yeah, it and sounds good. It sounds good. Yeah. You should definitely yeah. go ahead and do it, and uh, and then uh, I, it's going to be better for everyone if we at least yeah. uh, FS stuff. If that works in Imba one, then I'm going to use VS Code m much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Node APIs would be fantastic to have working properly. Yeah.
so but you have to like uh yeah decide that i really don't know because for me like it's not a big issue i can just close vs code and open up vim and then continue and everything is nice yeah. But I don't yeah. know if that's like worst case. You can use the Sublime plugin, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's okay. Yeah, for for Inba One. Yeah. Yes. So if you end up updating it and it doesn't work yeah. out well in practice, then we can say yeah. use Sublime in the meantime or the Vim plugin. Yeah. And I, to be honest, I do think Sublime is a much better way to a much better tool to use for Inba One than VS Code as it is right now. Uh, mm. But but yeah. uh, do you think that uh, updating it is going to bring it on par with Sublime, or is Sublime still superior? With For Inba One, set? like yeah. if if we update this to make sure it works okay with Inba One, I mm. think it will probably already be a better experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I am wondering maybe we can at least. Uh, so now we do read the the. Imba config file if there is an Imba config. So we could also make it the, the way that you could explicitly just say that this project is an Imba one project. And then uh, the compiler, the tooling could much, much more easily uh, hide errors and completions and, and even like uh, compile things with the old uh, syntax, with, with the old uh, uh, compiler. But uh, yeah, but it's one interesting. More, one more thing, now that I uh, remember it. Mm. I did for this, I haven't released it. It has been pushed to GitHub, but the next release will also move to tabs only in Nice. And uh, it's just much better. It's, it's difficult to highlight it instantly in VS Code because you're not allowed to add background coloring to, uh, to uh, TM languages, like to uh, style scope. Um, but it will at least show it when it compiles. It will like make a squiggly under red underline and say that use tabs for indentation. Nice, um, nice. So I, I think it's much better. It's so much easier to, uh, yeah, when you know that that is the symbol for indentation, it's much easier with the parsing and everything. Yeah, and in case someone watching this is suffering from the inconsistent indentation, yeah. In VS Code, you can actually, uh, it's built in. You can run the command P and then convert. Yeah, indentation to tabs, yeah. Yeah. And also, I've, I've added the VS Code settings now in the new thing. should, by default, turn on tab-based indentation for, for Imba files. Amazing. And just one to, again, <laughs> try to uh, fight for the reason I... Uh, I'm in favor of using tabs is exactly the fact that since this is an indentation based uh, language, mm -hmm. indentation are meaningful. Um, I see a lot of people actually use, um, use uh, uh, two spaces for tabs, like smaller indentation. So with, when you use tabs for indentation, I can change this to actually now I use uh, two spaces wide tabs. But if you use space of indentation, then that's just not possible. So we can't view the same file with different uh, uh, indent size if you use spaces for indentation. Oh, I think nice. for me, that's just uh, Yeah, so you can actually get the same control you had with spaces, basically. Yeah, so this is the, still the same file. Nothing has changed. But I like to view it with uh, eight spaces for indentation. And you like mm -hmm. to view it with two. Then we can still do that without fighting. Um, nice. One more question while I uh, <laughs> remember it. Since we re-added in place itself, the, I don't, I'm not sure if you remember it. Let me just find some uh, random uh, example. Let's say we have a, uh, let's say I create a new class. Yeah, and we also, I haven't added a lot of them uh, yet, but, uh, we have a good snippet support as well. So let's see if you have self and four. So we can easily add more snippets that make sense in different contexts. Um, That's uh, very useful, at least for we defining about, a tag. Yeah. If we have a constructor or some method that takes a, an argument and then you want to uh, set that uh, as a property, right? So with the app syntax, you would do it like this. 
but now you need to do it with self. But again, that seems kind of weird since you can um, you can do it without self when um, when the name of the property doesn't exist in the in the scope, right? Why does this look weird? No, like, I I think it just looks kind of ugly that you sometimes sometimes you need to use self dot mm. and other times you don't. So I'm just wondering when you look at the syntax highlighting here, is this? Do you think this is bad or? Because for me it, it makes totally sense. Like when you try to set when these two are identical, yeah, self is always implicit there. Since it doesn't make sense to set a variable to the value of the same variable, uh, it could easily know that yeah, now you are intending to set it as a property. Yeah, but but why do that at all? Why can't why can't we infer that? Like if you have yeah. a constructor uh, field there, and yeah. then. Uh, it's matching the name of the prop yeah. or whatever is defined, then you it's automatically yeah. set. So you yeah, have to, yeah, the, the way you I'm, do it is defining it in the location above. Yeah. But that is, that is, what do you mean? Like this will automatically set it as the property or? Yeah, if you define it uh, right below a location. As a property? Yeah. I think that's, too much magic probably why, why is that, that too much magic you're you're saying in because the maybe maybe you you just need to you blah blah you do something here you don't rem especially like prop and it, it it's uh, it will only happen for the constructor not for other methods and if you happen to write like oh i i forgot something i write um space there and somewhere inside of here i set self state already do will it set before this will it set after the constructor it's difficult to just remember that this will automatically be set i think so just I mean, we can discuss that as well but just to move back to the the first thing here do you yeah. think this is ambiguous because right now no no if your question is if it's ambiguous no it's not ambiguous it's clear that it's assigning owner to owner in this case um it just doesn't make any sense when you read it like that. You don't think this makes sense? No, because like it seems if you're gonna if you see in buffer the first time, yeah, it's you're gonna say why would you assign something to itself? That's what you're gonna read from it. I know that it's assigning it to the the scope there yeah. location, but th that's not what you're seeing there. Yeah, and Eric says confusing. Hey, Eric. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so it's definitely confusing. Okay, then then you can continue to use self for that case. Yeah, because that's uh, explicit in that case. There's no ambiguity. Yeah, yeah. but uh, again, if you think if implicit self is confusing in general, then you could also always use self -stop. Yeah, but implicit in self cases, is very nice. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Eric wrote something. I get the explanation, but it would be confusing yeah. if I just read it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I I'm. Tr yeah, so maybe that's my so, fault. Yeah, and I totally agree that it would be confusing uh, if you just read it, especially when you don't have semantic highlighting. But when you get used to reading files with semantic highlighting, you mm. will always know that these yellow ones are variables and the blue ones are referring to like implicit properties. Uh, but yeah. Maybe we should try it out and see. Because yeah. if you think about it in the lens of someone who's new, then it's easy to make this uh, conception that you're yeah. assuming they're reading it literally. Yeah. So this would apply to all methods then, the proposal? Yeah. And it's basically just like, usually this should probably throw an error. So it doesn't make sense in any other case than when you actually want to set the property. Um, so right now, I don't even think it's that important to remove it. Right now, this compiles correctly. And then if you want to, you can at least try to use that in your own project and see, at least see in the cases where you experience it, see whether you think it. it okay, well, maybe this more. actually does make sense. Uh, maybe it does make sense. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you, as a 
if you're being introduced to Imba early on and then implicit self is explained very well, yeah. and then you understand that part and then you know everything on the left hand side is always implicit self. Yeah. And not necessarily on the right hand side, depending on the context. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but but everything won't be. Um, now it it looks confusing, but if you have like state here, mm. then this is not implicit self. Like state already exists as a variable in the scope. It will only um, be implicit when it's not a variable or when you in the specific case where you set it to the same so i i understand that it could be confusing for people so maybe the advice should probably be to use uh, explicit in most cases but if you write an internal library and you you like the terseness then yeah and then you know. power users power users can yeah. use that stuff yeah i'm not yeah. saying it shouldn't be there it's just that yeah. i think i would have a challenge explaining this to people yeah and I agree, and, and that's one of the problems I've been thinking a lot about with implicit self. I still think it is quite difficult to explain to newcomers, and that is the problem. But just using programming for a long time and using it and then not using it, I, I think it's worth the effort to make good documentation and, and explain it because mm. it is so much uh, cleaner when you, when you get used to it, I think. Yeah, so I definitely need to try the VS Code uh, plugin uh, or extension more. So yeah. uh, to wrap up this part and then to move on to the next bits, which I'm sure Eric is interested uh, in as well. So uh, yeah. if someone uh, can't wait for you to update it, how are they going to install this today? Just go through the uh, process. So if you really can't wait, then you can clone the uh, VS Code Imba repository on the Imba organization, mm -hmm. I think. I can actually show in uh, the terminal, I guess. Uh, so you would clone it into some directory and then you would need to, uh, inside of your, this is on Mac. So inside of your user folder, there is a .vs code folder and that also has an extensions folder. Yeah. And if you look in that one, I've essentially just created a sim link to the folder where my, uh, Clone repository exists. Yeah, and uh, but yeah. I am going to release it probably later today. I'm just going to check uh, how the how things will uh, work with Imba One. So yeah, then it's best uh, to let people use it that way. But I think this is gonna. If anyone who's watching this wants to install it, this is the way. I know of yeah. a different way, which is more painful, but adding a sim link, then you only need to build it, right? So you just yeah. run yeah. yarn watch once and then it should be there. Yeah. Or I think it's actually a yarn run build or something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So maybe uh, mm -hmm. for the next topic, could you open up the Imba source code? So uh, here. Yeah. There. Yeah. But I think uh, I need to just close the window. I think that might, Kind of don't save. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. Because there okay. you have some Imba one code also as well, right? So yeah, yeah. It's gonna be good for dog yeah. fooding. So the topic I was thinking about was styling. So uh, Eric has been mentioning SAS uh, support uh, for a while now, and I think it makes yeah. sense to uh, have um, just have a way to do it. Not make it the default, obviously, but yeah. uh, just uh, if you install. If you install this plugin and if you have this keyword in the comment, then it triggers the SAS mode or whatever you want to call it. So can't we yeah. just use the SAS compiler in the Imba project if this keyword is there? Yeah, but that depends. We can if the main reason for using SAS is that you want the nice uh, bracketless uh, syntax, mm -hmm. then we can easily do that. But when you use it with import importing from other modules and other files and and things like that then it is becomes kind of difficult because why, our why? Imba compiler is, huh? why because the imba compiler itself is really stupid it doesn't even have a file system access to anything you just send it a chunk of code and then it returns a compiled chunk of code so if that chunk of code had to actually start looking up other files and resolving files and compiling things that way then it becomes much more complex so if we want to support that, I do think we need to do it through something like Rollup 
and just look at how, just the same way we did it through Webpack with Imba One, like where we actually expose the style block as a virtual file to the bundler and make let that bundler uh, deal with the compiling the all the blocks and yeah. Yeah, don't you think that's uh, like the most reasonable approach yeah. to do now? Yeah, I think that's the most reasonable approach. Uh, and uh, Because then and it would I, be part of the build step, right? And then uh, yeah, Imba really just sees text, nothing else. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, and you, do you think it would work the same way it does with the loader? Like, uh, is there just some roller plugin to add and... Um, I'm trying to get the picture of what is required on the Imba side. Yeah, on the Imba side, I think we will need to just look into how that type of virtual file is exposed in Rollup, like it was in, in uh, you, you have worked on the Webpack side where you see that we extract the CSS files and in weird hacky ways make make it look like there are external CSS files. Yeah. Uh, we just need to find out how we would do that with Rollup and then. <laughs> And then do it, I guess. So uh, yeah. the reason why I'm also interested in that part of the code base is because uh, I also want to be able to use comment blocks everywhere. And yeah. I don't know why it stopped working, but it definitely stopped working because now I can't put it wherever I want. I can only put it at the top or at the bottom for some reason. Okay. But, I want to, but I want to be able to put it wherever I want. So... Let's say uh, this, uh, yeah, now you have a node. Do you have a tag up or something you could look I at? I think, yeah, I can, but I think that's probably a, a bug, so I should look into that and fix it. Yeah, so, I, like, I want to add it right below render, right below render, not above it. And yeah. I want to be able to add it uh, right below a span or whatever I want. And I want to be able to add multiple ones of them, so not just the one, if I want, does it make okay. sense? Yeah, um, but because then I could have again, a global you styling. Probably, but, you, <clears throat> but I guess you probably also want this scope CSS comment to magically only apply to things inside of this tag. Correct. Right? Yeah, and that's not something we support right now. Yeah. Um, so scopes, just like in, in uh, view, I guess, in, in single file components in view, these scope style blocks, uh, are scoped to the whole file, like every type of tag inside of this file. Yeah, so um, I want it to be scoped to the indentation you are in. Like uh, if yeah, you're in, I understand. In this tag, I understand, yeah. and I agree. But when you start doing advanced, using advanced scope stuff like that, then I actually do think it's time to start looking into all the proposals and maybe just exactly do like uh, do have a magic keyword for CSS and have our own CSS syntax. I know that for you, the the main reason you don't like that is that you want to be able to just paste in CSS from anywhere. Mm, um, from anywhere. Yeah. And if you want to do that, then you could do that in a comment block at the top level. Uh, or we could have something yeah, but, that but, 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 translates the CSS. Yeah, yeah but you, you're not really, in those cases, like you're not spending the most of your time copy pasting code. You're actually writing code. So yeah. that's why it makes sense to group. Like if I know I'm just going to style this part, I'll write yeah. my style right there. This is not something I'm pasting yeah. in. This is vanilla CSS I'm writing, yeah. which is related to exactly that point. And I want it to be there. And if you slice up your app really nicely, mm -hmm. it can be easier to maintain because yeah. you have the related chunks next to each other. So you don't have this extreme context switching between the files. Yeah. But for no. you, doesn't it, don't you think it makes sense with the custom keyword? Like with nice highlighting, everything integrated? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm still not, uh, like, I'm not a huge fan of the custom syntax for it. That's why I like the comment blocks. It's, it's not really okay. a new syntax. It's just the extending an existing thing. But I yeah. see the value in discussing it for the variables. Yeah. For so to be honest, for me, just even without variables, I think that especially since Imba is indentation based, it makes a lot of sense to just allow styling with the same clean indentation based uh, syntax where you don't need uh, semicolons um, and where you have nice consistent highlighting and stuff. And in that case, 
to me it doesn't it's not totally clear that if you just add a scope comment inside of here it would only apply apply to this uh, and if you add it here then we'll apply to everything that would make more sense to me with uh, custom uh, the custom type of uh, uh, yeah custom yeah I guess what you're saying but uh, yeah. we definitely don't agree on that no yeah so uh, at least uh, what, what do you think is there any value in looking into the SAS stuff now or should we like should we defer it until Eric is screaming or someone else is screaming about it <laughs> um please put it at or add it now or something yeah um i think it doesn't make sense for me to look too much into it right now maybe mm. you can start looking at how rollup does things like this like how rollup works with uh i guess svelte it probably allows inline styling and svelte uses rollup so what does svelte do to compile these uh, style blocks to a uh, one big style sheet oh yeah that's a good idea yeah um while i think um uh, yeah so i'll probably not work at it immediately and and when i start working more on styles i i i'm a fan of doing the index indented css style even if you don't like it but uh, yeah hmm. uh, let me check the topics so yeah, that, that's those two on the styling. And then we have the Gitter. So I, I've looked into uh, tools for archiving and importing the content into uh, Discord. Mm -hmm. So the imp can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Let me... What's up? Uh, I just a uh, message. No, no worries, you can just continue. So... Um, uh, the Gitter was what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. To uh, export uh, the messages seems to be easy. There's a tool for that, and then you just register a token. Um, I tried also looking into importing, but that was harder than expected. Uh, or I was assuming I could use an existing Slack tool, but there's some issue mm -hmm. with the formats, and uh, the tool just just bugs out because we have so many messages. Is it correct okay. that uh, Gitter was around since 2016, the hour rooms? Yeah, probably. I think yeah. that. So exporting it was super easy then. We just need a way to, maybe maybe we should make that into our own project. Like, because the it's just a JSON payload and it's very well defined and it's a big file. Maybe I should send it to you uh, fairly soon. Yeah. And you can take a look at it if you want. Because yeah. that's something you could actually, um, maybe that's a good app, like uh, a Gitter uh, Tran Archive or whatever you want to call it for Imba. Yeah. Um, I could also take well, a look think, at it because I think, I think like- probably you should, I have so many, yeah, things in the pipeline, so. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to be, list out all of the, paginated of course uh, all of the messages show who said what the date and then render the markdown so uh, yeah. or actually i think there is even a if i remember correctly in the payload there's even a html field instead of a pure text one mm -hmm. what do you think should we uh, get that page up so maybe we could have it on uh, gitter.archive.imba.io and then just uh, after it's yes, working, shut down the Gitter. Yeah, but I, I do think we should. It's isn't it smart to keep the Gitter up and just have the message that we have moved to Discord. Now the finally the link works. I I didn't know that it didn't work before, but I saw Eric posted a new link. Um. But I, I I for me I don't know that it's to that important with the history, but I understand that for new users, it probably is important. But again, things aren't just, uh, just the documentation for version two is still not really good. And I don't think the things from the history in the chat help a lot. Uh, I, I think nice the to... history is much more important than the chat uh, room. I think the ch chat room itself okay. isn't really that uh, much worth considering like, if you look at who's there and the activity level, 
Yeah. Like, um, if someone who's not active today uh, yep. is really interested in being active again, yep. I'm sure they'll figure yep. out a way. Like, as soon as you type Imba in a search engine yep. or Imba in some other keywords, you're going to find uh, the relevant places. Yeah. And when we get up the Discord link and so on, if you want to join the chat, you're going to be, you're, you'll figure it out, basically. So yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. really see any big value in having it open. But if you think we should keep it open, like what kind of value do you see in having it open with a message that we're there? No, yeah, for me it was mostly that there are quite a few members there, and it's it's nice. So there are will still exist links to the Gitter, I guess. So it it was just to make sure people. I'm not sure if I see the the big value in removing it either. Like. It doesn't cost us anything to have it there and then have a link just pointing people to the new chat. But yeah, we don't need to discuss that now. You can you can decide. You don't need yeah. to spend time discussing that. Yeah, I can think about it some more and uh, yeah. hear what other people think. But uh, mm. yeah. But nice. since you asked me uh, not to shut it down, that's why I wanted to raise yeah. it up before I okay, yeah. actually shut it down. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> The next thing is the transcribe service. So I'm going to try it out later. Um, I wanted to try it out. I think you mentioned the tool a while back. Yeah. So we can upload MP3 files and then get um, get the text file from it. So I'm going to try yeah. it out hopefully today just to see how it works. I downloaded the desktop app, but I never logged in. So. Okay. Have you tried it? Uh, no, I haven't tried it. Just yeah, cool. So that's all of the topics. Um, yeah. Do you have anything more? Um, no, I don't think so. Eric, do I'm you uh, do you have any? Sorry. No, I'm just uh, excited to uh, to push out the new version now because I've been dealing with it for a long time, just myself, and getting it out will make it easier to continue uh, continue the path to release. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I also look forward to upgrading. Um, so yeah. you're going to do that right now, right? The bumping yeah. of the versions. Yeah. So there's no change to Imba rollup then, or is there any? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, so Eric has some comments, which we can... Yeah. I don't know what that sound is. I'll have to look into it. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I understood, like... You really want to use dynamic data in dev and it's static at runtime? Is it just about being able to build it as a single full style sheet to no, no. in production or? No, I, this is actually pretty cool if I understand it correctly. Because I was, what? sorry, it's a sound in the background. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically if I understand it, Eric, you have to correct me if I misunderstand. Let's say you're working on a tag, right? You're creating your tag and you have a list of some sort and you want to somehow very easily define data for the list while working on it. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So basically if, imagine what you're doing, uh, let pages there. Yeah. Yeah. That that data is only available in dev mode and it's being rendered. Okay, so this isn't related to CSS actually. Or no, I don't think I don't think that is. Oh, related. maybe I then misunderstood. Like his first sentence was probably just "I'm done with the CSS syntax." Then what I really want. Okay. Yeah, but um, you could combine this with the CSS part also. Like, yeah. uh, if you are work, you're writing a lot of CSS, and you just lead. You're you're still in dev mode. This component is going to be used, and yeah. then. You just want it to be rendered and then you define this data is close to the thing I'm working on, but it will yeah. only be used and rendered in dev mode. Okay. That's what I think he's saying. But Eric, uh, please correct us if we misunderstood you. I think still we will probably need to do that as a talk more about that in a separate uh, thread. Maybe you already started one in news or something, but. but... Yeah. Okay, yeah, so he's thinking about CSS. Um, I, so, again, I'm, and 
extreme fan of CSS variables, where it would essentially be dynamic in production in runtime as well. Um, but I definitely would uh, would uh, recommend you to look into CSS variables because they are supported in most browsers now. And there you can do that very easily. And you can also, in Imba, uh, you can e even set CSS variables directly, like uh, title. But is this Imba 2 only? This is Imba or? 2, Imba 2 okay. only, yeah. And nice. it's experimental, like it might change, but just as CSS variables are, are prefixed with two dashes, then you could set CSS variables like this, and then you can use them in the styles. Like uh, uh, if you do uh, tint, I'm not sure what color that would be, uh, but then in the CSS, you can, you can do like, uh, if this was a, let's see, CSS, uh, this yeah. block, then you do uh, page item uh, div, then you do color so yeah that was just a tiny example of how you can use these yeah we actually talked about this a while back so this yeah, yeah, yeah. works so you can you can use uh, uh, Eric if you in one file let's say in your main file you would do an unscoped CSS block where you do root and then you can define a bunch of variables like primary, color, red, uh, font size, whatever, 20 pixels. You can use that wherever. So inside of a totally different document here, you could do page item div, font size, uh, bar, bar uh, font size. And then even like if you didn't set a font size anywhere in the in the, the tag tree, then it would use the root font size, even if this is defined in a totally different CSS file. But you can also override them inside of your specific component. So you could also do like page item uh, font size 10 pixels. Then everything inside of page item that refers to font size will refer to the 10 pixels. So it's extremely dynamic. It's so many people, one of the reasons I'm such a fan of CSS variables, most people who are used to SAS and stylus and, and less, they think that, well, we already have variables uh, in these pre-processing frameworks and that works well. But the point is that this is a whole different kind of variable exactly because it is dynamic at runtime. So you can do so much more with real CSS variables than you can in any pre-processor. And that's one of the reasons I'm also I also think that um, m most functionality of preprocessors are no longer needed when you have CSS variables. Uh, so I think in the future, we will move more towards plain CSS and using the power of CSS variables. Mm. That was a little rant right there, but yeah. No, no, it, it makes sense, definitely. Yeah. This is cool. I didn't think about it at all, but yeah, it's, uh, it's nice that it's in there. Yeah. So Eric, could you try it out and uh, use it and tell us how it's working? Oh yeah, you'll yeah. experiment with it. Nice. Yeah. yeah so then, so they I agree with that. That would be the next step to like move that into a nice uh, syntax here, where you can instead refer directly to CSS variables and also do yeah. But that's another topic for another time, I guess. Uh, Cool. So Thank if the, if there's then not anything else, we should uh, definitely wrap up. Yeah. yeah this Great work. Nice yeah. Likewise. Thanks. Bye. So we'll talk later. Yeah, Bye sure. everyone. Bye. Bye. Eric.